أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My dear viewers, wherever you are, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The holy month of Ramadan is the best opportunity that we will be inspired by great personalities throughout history. And who's better than Al-Imam Al-Hasan alayhi salam? When we speak of Al-Imam Al-Hasan alayhi salam, we have spoken of all virtues and goodness in the world. Because our Imams are the embodiments of the Holy Quran and they are the manifestations of God's attributes. God is invisible. We cannot see God. However, we see the traces of His mercy and His majesty throughout His work in nature, in this universe. For example, when we look at the galaxies, when we look at the stars and constellations, and this wonderful space and this universe, we come to realize the scope of his knowledge and wisdom. When we find a tiny little worm underneath a big rock deep in the ocean, searching for food and staying alive, we recognize and appreciate the mercy and benevolence of God. When we look at Imam al Hassan alayhi salam and his demeanor, his legacy, we come to appreciate the grace of God and his wonderful attributes. Because Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam are a small reflection of the attributes of the Lord, of the Almighty. Therefore, it is a great occasion in the holy month of Ramadan we try to be inspired by someone like Al-Imam Al-Hasan alayhi salam. Throughout my discussion I will give a few examples of the attributes and demeanor of this great Imam. Al-Imam Al-Hasan alayhi salam had a title and the title is called Karimu Ahl al Bayt, the generous, the gracious of Ahl al Bayt. Also, there is another title that is called Halimu Ahl al Bayt, the patient of Ahl al Bayt, one that applied to his ethics, morality, and the other one is to his grace and generosity. The Imam السلام, was the most generous person you can see and you can imagine during his history. He himself السلام, has said this, in أحسن الحسن الخلق الحسن. The best of best is the best demeanor, the best attitude, the pleasant attitude when you face the adversary. Why? Because this beautiful attitude, the nice attitude that you have toward others, number one, it gains you friendships. You will gain more loyal friends. It also make you gain admirers. And most, most importantly, it neutralizes the enemy. If you have a better enemy, with your demeanor, with your attitude, similar to the attitude of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, you will make that enemy, enemy neutralized. In a famous story that probably the most of audience have heard of is that when a man from Sham, and Sham used to be the empire of Muawiyah, who was the arch enemy 
the bitter enemy of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam especially Ali ibn Abi Talib and his sons Al-Imam Al-Hasan and al Hussein. He used to curse Ali ibn Abi Talib and to propagate negative news and rumors against the household of the Prophet. So this man was brainwashed by the propaganda machine of Muawiyah. He came to Medina and when he looked at the Imam, Al Imam Al Hassan was walking with his companions in a majestic procession, in a majestic entourage. When this man looked at the Imam and they told him that this man is Al Hassan ibn Ali, he started cursing and using a profane language against the Imam. The Imam kept quiet for a while. Then he said, Ya Hada, I have seen that you are brainwashed by the propaganda of Muawiyah. But now, if you need anything, please tell us. In kunta law sa'altana a'atainak. In kunta ja'i'an ashba'anak. If you need something and you ask us, you will get the answer. If you were hungry, we will feed your stomach. وَإِن كُنْتَ مُحْتَاجًا أَغْنَيْنَاكَ If you are in need of cash, we will get you the cash. وَإِن كُنْتَ طَرِيدًا أَوَيْنَاكَ If you are a fugitive, we will get you a shelter. فَلَوْ حَرَّكْتَ رَحْلَكَ إِلَيْنَا وَكُنْتَ ضَيْفًا عَلَيْنَا Why don't you take your belonging and become a guest to us? The Imam took him as a valuable guest to his home. The next day, the man stood up in front of people and he said, Ashhadu annaka khalifatullahi fil arf. Today, I witness that you are the vicegerent of God on the face of a planet, not Muawiyah. Then this man said, When I came to Medina, the most hateful people in my eyes were Ali and his son. But now, the most loving people that I have in mind is Ali and his son. By the demeanor of Imam al Hassan, the enemy not only have been neutralized, rather has become loyal to the Imam. The reason is that the majority of people are brainwashed. They don't see the truth. The truth is concealed. Once we expose the truth to them in nice demeanor, in good attitude. They not only abandon their hostility, in fact, they become loyal to us. The second story, it is says that one day the Imam was in Masjid al-Haram, circling around the Kaaba and performing tawaf. Of course, his tawaf was mustahab, advisory, not a mandatory one. Right at that time, where the Imam was in the middle and engaged in prayers and supplications with the Almighty and in the middle of the tawaf, a man stopped him and told him, I need you, I request you to attend to my need. The Imam broke his tawaf and walked with this gentleman. One of the followers of the Imam waited until the Imam came back. He sarcastically told the Imam, You went with this man for a worldly affair, for a daily and basic need of this life at the expense of the tawaf, which is the best ritual and a prayer that you seek nearness to God? The Imam answered him this, مَنْ ذَهَبَ فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ الْمُسْلِمْ فَقُضِيَتْ حَاجَتُهُ كُتِبَتْ لَهُ حَجَّةٌ وَعُمْرَةٌ وَإِنْ لَمْ تُقْضِ لَهُ كُتِبَتْ لَهُ عُمْرَةٌ The Imam said, 
if anyone goes with his brother, with his brother, Muslim brother, to help him, to assist him to resolve his problem. If he could manage solving the problem, then God would give him the rewards of two things. A hajjah, the whole pilgrimage going to the house of Allah during the time of pilgrim, pilgrimage, which is the hajjah, and in addition, a umrah, meaning visiting the house of the Almighty in some other occasion. He said if he accomplish his need, God will give him the reward for two items. But if he could not, God will give him a reward of the Umrah, even if this person is in the middle of Tawaf. This is a great lesson to us, brothers and sisters, that at any moment, at any circumstances, if you are faced with a, with a situation that you can extend your help to others, regardless of their faith, regardless of their ideology and background, it is incumbent. This is the advice. This is the practical advice of our Imams is to extend our help to them. The third example is his generosity when he used to give people. Today, we live in a world that there is a huge difference and inequality between the rich people and those who have not. This inequality causes disturbance in society. It will make people who have not, they may, they, it makes them feeling resentment and hatred and animosity toward others and causes civil disturbance in society and sometimes wars among nations. The fact that today there are millions of people starve, have shortage in food, this indicative of the moral corruption that the, the world lives in, more than the economic crisis. According to studies, each day there are 10,000 children die from malnutrition. The problem is that with our greed and stinginess, not because there is not enough resources in the planet. Studies show that the planet can take up to 15 million, 15 billion people. There is enough resources to everybody. But the, pro the problem is that it's not been divided equally among the people in the planet. For example, when you look at the World Monetary Fund, IMF, when they give loan to a certain nation or country, they give it under very humiliating and strict condition to the point that they subjugate that nation. They humiliate that state. But look at the demeanor of Al-Hassan ibn Ali alayhi salam. A man comes to him and asks him while in the middle of heat in the afternoon. He asks the Imam with writing a piece of letter to the Imam and brings the letter forward to the Imam. Al-Hassan takes the letter and immediate, immediately tells him that I will fulfill your need. The people who were around him told him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, you did not even read what's in the letter. He said, yes, but I fear that God would tell me that you have humiliated this person enough while you were reading his request. The person was waiting in humiliation and I didn't want him to wait in a humiliation. I wanted to make him happy and relieve him. So I immediately told him, told him that your need will be fulfilled. It is narrated that the Imam has divided 
his entire wealth two times half and half one half is for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one for himself and two times that he gave away everything that he had in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also it is narrated that one day he was walking in the streets of Medina when he passes by a farm that belonged to Abban ibn Taghlub who had a servant the servant was standing up eating piece of a bread and giving one piece to the dog he would take one piece for himself and one piece to the observing dog who was sitting and watching the Imam told him why do you do this why do you share your food with this animal the servant said I felt very embarrassed that I eat two pieces of bread while I give him one I have to divide that into two pieces one for him one for me the Imam tells him stay there I beg you for the sake of God I ask you to stay where you are he goes to Aban Ibn Ghalib and tells him can you sell me this farm the man tells him yes and he told and told him can you sell me the servant the man told him yes Ibn Rasulullah you will have both the farm and the servant the Imam came and told the servant that number one you are free in the way of Allah second this farm is also belong to you this is the generosity of the Imam look how the Imam was so passionate toward a servant of some fellow what about us we should be so helpful hopeful of the generosity of the Imam who are we are the proud followers of the Imam we hope that he will not forget us in the day of judgment and extend his generosity to all of us. يا غالب أنا غير مغلوب يا صانع أنا غير مصنوع يا خالق أنا غير مخلوق يا مالك أنا غير مملوك يا قاهر أنا غير مقهور يا رافع أنا غير مرفوع يا حافظ أنا غير محفوظ يا ناصر أنا غير منصور يا شاهد أنا غير غائب يا قريب أنا غير بعيد سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا نور النور يا منور النور يا خالق النور يا مدبر النور يا مقدر النور يا نور كل نور يا نورا قبل كل نور يا نورا بعد كل نور يا نورا فوق كل نور يا نورا ليس كمثله نور سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت 
الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رأب يا من عطاؤه الشريف يا من فعله لطيف يا من لطفه مقيم يا من إحسانه قديم يا من قوله حق يا من وعده صدق يا من عفوه فاضل يا من عذابه عدل يا من ذكره حلو يا من فضله عميم سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب with the eloquent Dua Joshan al-Kabir. We will cover segments 46, 47, and 48. Segments number 46, the theme is to cure paralysis. And it says, Ya ghaliban ghayra maghloob, Ya sani'an ghayra masnoo'an, Ya khaliqan ghayra makhluuq, Ya malikan ghayra mamluuk, Ya qahiran ghayra maqhoor, Ya rafi'an ghayra marfu'a, يا حافظا غير محفوظ يا ناصرا غير منصور يا شاهدا غير غائب يا قريبا غير بعيد The dominant who is not overpowered The designer who is not made The creator who is not created Master and not the slave All dominant who is not dominated Exalter and the exalted protector who needs no protection, helper who needs no help, witness who is not absent, near who is not distant. I stopped at this beautiful statement or phrase, Ya sani'an ghayra masnu' Ya khaliqan ghayra makhluq. Oh, the fabricator, the fashioner, the designer who was not designed, the creator who is not a created. Let's talk about science a little bit. The agnostics, the materialists, they talked about the origin of this universe versus the origin of God if God exists in their eyes. When they talk about this universe, they used to claim that this universe doesn't have an origin and will not have an end. It's a primordial universe. Why? Because it's very convenient to claim that way because that will remove the condition and the necessity of the creator of this universe. If you would say, who's the creator of this universe? They tell you there is no creator because the universe is a perpetual. It's an everlasting. It was from the beginning and didn't have a beginning and start, and it will not have an end. That was their notion until 1929, when their claim received a fatal blow at the hand of an astronomer and a cosmologist under name of Edwin Hubble. Edwin Hubble in 1929 have demonstrated that the universe is expanding, is getting bigger and bigger. When he focused at the receding lights of the constellations, galaxies and stars that were moving away from our system. Imagine when you see 
in the darkness a faint light. When this faint light start to increase in density, that is, tell you some, that is telling you something, that that object is approaching you. On the other side, when the light loses intensity, it means that this object is becoming farther and farther away from you. That's what Edwin Hubble has experienced. He showed that the lights of those galaxies and stars are receding, getting fainter and fainter from the eyes of the planet, of our planet, which means that they are taking a very long distance, which means also that at one point in the past, they were all converged together. Then they started to separate. And this is the hypothesis that came for the Big Bang. The Big Bang model was introduced at that time, that the universe was tiny little dot with so much power, energy, and heat, extremely hot spot, all of a sudden it expanded. And then constellations and star and star started to diverge from each other, meaning that the universe had an origin. The minute you say that the universe has an origin, you should ask, how did it happen and who did it start it? There must be a cause for it. Why? Because there is a law that is called law of causality, meaning that there must be a cause and effect, anything that takes a place in this universe cannot happen by itself. There must be an explanation to it. There must be a cause in it. This is a logical mathematical law, the cause and effect. So the minute, the moment you say that the universe has started and had an origin, the question is who originated this? Scientists say that, say that, that moment before the expansion used to be called the point of singularity where energy time and space were together and then all of a sudden it's spread well a tiny dot cannot expand without a force and power being exerted in it who did that an entity that were so powerful superpower that itself was not material, that was not created from any material, outside of the realm, the realm of this point of singularity, cannot be contained by space, time, and energy, and matter. This is what the scientists are saying today, that whatever has caused the, new, the universe is beside the point. It's outside of the point of singularity. And that is the Almighty. When you look at the elegant words of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, when he talks about the attributes of God, he says, الَّذِي لَيْسَ لِلْصَفَتِهِ حَدٌ مَحْدُودٌ God does not have a limit. وَلَا نَعْتٌ مَوْجُودٌ You cannot describe any feature of God. وَلَا وَقْتٌ مَعْدُودٌ وَلَا أَجَلٌ مَمْدُودٌ God is outside of time and space. These are the words. Ya shahidan ghayra ghaib. God was ever witnessing, witnessing to everything that took place. These, uh, this is segment number 46. Segment number 47 is to enlighten heart, where it says, Light of light, illuminator of light, creator of light, planner of light, estimator of light, light of all light, light that precedes in existence every light, light that will survive all light, light that is above every light, light like of which there is no light. Light is a natural agent that stimulates sight and make things visible to our eyes. Maybe we have excellent eyes, we have a 20 over 20 vision. 
but we cannot see with our eyes. Why? Because there is one factor is missing, and that is light. You must have to have light in order to see things. Therefore, it's an agent of visibility. Visibility cannot find its place and cannot materialize without, without light. Light means figuratively everything. Why? Because you will see everything through your eyes when there is light. Darkness means oblivion, means nothing. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. God is the light of this universe, meaning that everything is contained by God. Everything is brought by God. He contains everything and He is the origin of everything. Light resembles everything. Darkness resembles oblivion and nothingness. Those who are disbelievers, they will end up in nothingness. As the ayah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ the Tawood, those who are disbelievers, their leaders will take them from light toward darkness, meaning toward oblivion, toward nothingness. That is segment number 47. And segment number 48 is to get rid of illness, where it says in number 48, Ya man ata'uhu sharif. يا من فعله لطيف يا من لطفه مقيم يا من إحسانه قديم يا من قوله حق يا من وعده صدق يا من عفوه فضل يا من عذابه عدل يا من ذكره حلو يا من فضله عميم The word يا من وعده صدق His promise is an absolute truth He fulfills the promise one of the greatest attributes of the Almighty is fulfilling his promise. promises. He makes good on his promises. And he loves people who make good on their promises. In fact, the Almighty praises one of his prophets and messengers, the great messenger Ismail. He says that in what <clears throat> Quran, Abdan wathkur fil kitabi Ismail innahu kana sadiq al-wa'di wa kana rasool al-nabiyya Mention, recall and appraise Ismail who is before anything else used to make good on his promise Sadiq al-wa'd Then he says that he was a messenger and a prophet of God Therefore this equality of being Sadiq al wad truthful and promising to fulfill his promises is the greatest thing. It's something very sought after. It is narrated that one day he promised a man to wait for him at certain spot of the street in the town. The next day when they were supposed to meet, Ismail went into that spot and waited. The man didn't show up. For one day, he didn't show up. For second day, he didn't show up. Until third day, three days, the man didn't show up while Ismail was fixated at that place. Because the man has totally forgotten about the appointment. When he saw Prophet Ismail, Ismail told him, if you have not showed up, I would have stayed there until I would die. This is how much Ismail used to honor his promise. This is a wonderful trait of punctuality. You have in order to preserve your time and save your time and ut utilize your time, you have to be punctual. Start at a certain point and end at a certain point. Why? Because time is very valuable. Another thing, another port important point about the fulfilling of promises and being trustworthy and trustful is that we should be a role model to
to others, especially to our kids. Our kids would look at us as, our, as their role models. If we break our promises, we have a breeding, a culture of hypocrisy. Those children will learn how to break their promises and how to lie, and this will affect their future. This will affect their lives. Sometimes the parents are appalled on the way that their children twist realities and do things while posing to and saying otherwise, posing and saying otherwise. The problem is that, that those kids, those children, have learned it from their parents. While there is so much admonishment and exhortion on people to make good on their promise. Especially when you promise your kids, you buy them something or you do something good for them, or you take them to somewhere, you have to fulfill that promise. Otherwise, you will engender hypocrisy and insincerity within your own family. Tomorrow, those little children will be the leaders of the nation. And if the nation will be misleading, is due to our action so many years before that incident because we didn't teach them well because we didn't make them fulfill their promises may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and give us the power and the ability to follow through his wonderful attributes wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh o kumal Direct your people to go out in the day to achieve noble traits and to go out in the night to meet the needs of those who might be sleeping. For I swear by him whose hearing extends to all voices, if ever someone pleases another heart, Allah will create a special thing out of this pleasing, so that whenever any hardship befalls him, it will come running like flowing water and drive away the hardship as wild camels are driven away.